What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Malifaux Lore Guide. This week, we are talking about Shenlong from the Ten Thunders. So spoilers coming up for all the Shenlong stories, and you can find a list of those stories in the description below. Don't forget while you're down there to drop me a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And now let's get into Shenlong. As a young monk, Shenlong was exceptionally talented as well as ambitious. Where most monks take training in one fighting style, Shenlong became a master of all four river styles of combat, leading to a great deal of political power. One day, Shenlong follows a blinding light and disappears into an old temple, where the tyrant, the dragon, takes him as his vessel. Today, Shenlong is over 80 years old, his youth maintained by the power of the tyrant that inhabits him, as long as it continues to find him useful. Shenlong looks on from a distance as Sensei Yu addresses the assembled monks from the four different temples. He orders three of them to attack him and easily avoids or deflects their blows, all the while explaining to the students that each of the styles has its own strengths and weaknesses, but that they are strongest when used together. Shenlong addresses the dragon and asks it if it plans to take a new host soon. The dragon responds that it would take him a long time to find another worthy of him and that he does not have that kind of patience. Shenlong approaches Sensei Yu and the students and they all give their attention out of respect. He tells Sensei Yu that he needs three students to accompany him on a mission, and Sensei Yu asks what type of mission it will be. Shenlong says he needs them to be aggressive, so Sensei Yu turns and chooses three High River monks and orders them to accompany Shenlong. As the four men move out, Shenlong explains that they will be headed through a secret breach to Malifaux, and that their mission is to retrieve an ancient artifact. They pass through the portal and find themselves in a forest in Malifaux, and they soon happen upon a battle raging between the Free Corps and some Nephilim. Shenlong identifies the artifact in a box that the Free Corps seem to have secured, and pauses while hidden to watch as his enemies fight each other. The dragon urges him on, and Shenlong says that it will be easier if he allows his enemies to weaken each other before striking. The dragon replies that he did not bestow his powers on Shenlong to make his life easy. As he looks back to the battle, he sees a mature Nephilim attacking the Free Corpsman, and Shenlong asks the dragon if he would like to see him use his powers to defeat such a powerful creature. The dragon, getting more annoyed, shoots back that it has seen Shenlong defeat many powerful foes, and that this one is simply in a different form. As they discuss it, a free corpsman emerges with a flamethrower and opens up on the remaining Nephilim, killing a few before the rest flee. Shenlong orders one of the monks to flank the enemy and attack when they are distracted, and brings the other two with him. They approach the free corpsman that appear to be trying to remove the box, and when they notice Shenlong approaching, they order him to stop where he is. He continues walking towards them, and they draw their guns, providing one final warning and then opening fire. One of the monks is shot, but Shenlong and the other monk engage the free corpsman, using their bare fists to overcome come their enemy's armor and blades. The free corpsmen are about to be overrun when the other soldier approaches and opens up with his flamethrower. He kills the monk, but is shocked to see that Shenlong seems to be absorbing the fire as he continues his attack. The remaining free corpsmen scatter and hide as Shenlong tries to stalk them through the ruins, the dragon urging him to retrieve the artifact. Shenlong senses that the dragon is especially eager to leave, and when he points this out, the dragon responds that there are entities on this side of the breach whose attention he does not wish to attract. He finds the soldier with the flamethrower dead on the ground and sees the marks from brass knuckles and realizes that the other monk is still alive. He finds the man slumped up against the wall and looks down at him noticing cut marks on his forearms, defensive wounds. He tells the monk that it is disgraceful and then hears another free corpsman approaching, a librarian, who sends out a magical pulse causing Shenlong to instinctively raise his arms to protect his face. The dragon scolds him for acquiring his own defensive wounds and Shenlong and the remaining monk spread out to engage their new foe. The dragon growls that she is successfully distracting them from the real goal, and Shenlong turns, realizing he is right, and approaches the box containing the relic. When the librarian sees the opening, she hits him with a burst of magic square in the back, and he turns to her angrily and screams, enough, as his body starts to transform into the glowing form of a dragon, twice his normal size, and a conflagration of flames erupts, filling the entire area. As the dragon lets his power recede and Shenlong returns to his normal form, he approaches the box and destroys it to reveal a small black orb. He hears a cry and turns to realize that the librarian is still alive. As the monk approaches to kill her once and for all, Shenlong orders him to stop, explaining that anyone who is strong enough to survive the dragon's power deserves to be spared. After the Governor General's ascension, the dragon tries to free himself from his human host and burst forth from Shenlong's body, only to find himself writhing in agony as his power is worn down and he is forced to seek refuge back inside of Shenlong. After this incident, the dragon's power retreats, and for the first time in a long time, Shenlong finds himself alone with his own thoughts. He realizes that he has neglected some of his teachings and that he must study to become stronger if he wants to survive the next incident. 
When Misaki challenges her father, the Oyabun of the Ten Thunders, to a duel, Shenlong's temple is chosen as a suitable location. Misaki stands with her few allies who are brave enough to stand against the Oyabun, while the remainder of the organization stands in her father's corner. Shenlong announces the stakes of the contest, explaining that if Misaki loses, she will be declared a traitor to the Ten Thunders, but if she wins, her name and honor will be restored. When the duel starts, Misaki quickly cuts down her father, and Shenlong proclaims her the winner, making her the new Oyabun and leader of the entire organization. Immediately after, Misaki gives the order for her loyal followers to cut down all of her father's top generals. Having been possessed by the dragon for many decades, Shenlong was originally honored to be chosen as its vessel, but he has recently discovered that the tyrant's true ambition is to find the other half of itself as it was torn apart during the tyrant war. As a result, Shenlong is now on the hunt for a means to free himself from the tyrant's influence. And that's a wrap for Shenlong. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of story content for him, but I think there's potential for him to become an even more important character in the story, considering his relationship with the tyrants. It's also interesting to note that he's one of the few main characters who's been on Earth through the whole story so far. Makes me wonder if he'll see him pop up in the other side. I'd also like to see a little more of the story fleshed out concerning his relationship with Misaki. He doesn't get talked about much after she comes to power, but we at least know she didn't kill him in her purge, so there must be some amount of respect there. But anyway, let me know in the comments below who you'd like to see me do a video on next. As always, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you don't mind helping me out a bit, and thanks for watching.